the second I touched that metal on the grain cart, it, it lit me up. I, I uh, received 12,000 volts of electricity through my body. I'm Zach Short. I'm from Asaria, Kansas, and I'm a fifth generation farmer. I've always been around farming my whole life. Uh, grew up on a farm. Always wanted to farm when I got older, be like my dad. He was kind of my role model, and I just loved the the freedom of farming, being out, being able to work outside, and and uh, the diversity of work you get. And not only that, when you farm, you uh, you get to see your accomplishments you, you achieve. You can go and drive on down a country road and, and look at your fields. I plan that, that's out there because this is what I did. And I think farmers are tough, they don't give up. It was just like any other day. Um, it was fall harvest. Um, the date was October 25th, 2014. And I just had kicked my combine into gear, and then that's when the guy that was helping run the grain cart had come on the radio and said this, I got smoke coming off this tractor, I think it's on fire. I remember getting, when I pulled up there, that the flame, I didn't get why there was a flame, a small flame this big around, this tall, coming off the tire, and I thought in my head, well, it must have been a hydraulic leak, something squirted over and got hot, ignited the tire. I was on the opposite side of the hitch and the tire, and being a young guy, this, pretty athletic in shape at the time and um, instead of running all the way around the tractor I went to grab the, uh, the ladder. I put my hand on it to try to high step the hitch and get right to that fire and um, the, the second I touched the, the ladder, little, little did I know that was the day that my life changed forever. Um, I got a phone call that said Zach was in an accident. My first question was is he alive and they said they didn't know. And it was a low hang power line that was arcing off the the end of the auger of the green cord. Then I'm going plastic. I got plastic. Sledgehammer. Then I shovel. So I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. I remember being shocked and just it froze my body. Every single muscle in my body was so tense I couldn't even move or control myself. I grabbed that shovel and give him a little tug and psh, old green one. Then he was unhooked. But not before a couple of good blasts. I grabbed one leg and drug him about 10 feet. Then he started breathing. I go, well, maybe he ain't dead. They said right when they drug me away, the whole power line, the wire fell down right where I was standing. I think I was pretty close to calling it. It was about my, my day that day. I was in a coma for 20 days. And during those 20 days, a lot of crazy things happened uh, that doctors can't even explain. The third day, they I was in the waiting room and a nurse ran out and she was frantically searching for somebody and then she said, where's Zach's wife? And I said, I'm right here. And she said, come now, we need to go. So I get back there and he's, um, they're doing chest compressions on him. He was coding, um, he coded for nine minutes. His lungs filled with fluid. He, his vitals weren't looking good and the doctor just told us, it's time to say goodbye. Um, he'll slowly pass. And a lot of things go through your mind when you're going through that and just, you know, you just, you do a lot of praying because of what, how serious his injuries were, where, you know, we figured out in a hurry that they were completely out of our hands. There's no way I could get the auction. I mean, my lungs were filled up, my kidneys weren't functioning. And so when they shut that machine off that night, another miracle happened, I believe. And um, God, yeah, he did some some miracles in my life. My lungs started clearing themselves out when they shut that machine out. The fluid started removing itself and um, my vitals actually got better when they did that. And, and I remember they said, they, the doctor told him that, I believe he's gonna make a fool out of me. That night I came through it and, and um, so then that's when they decided, well, we need to go move to the next step. And they had to uh, amputate portions of both my legs. I'm amputated below my right, on my below my knee on my right side and above my knee on the left side. And that was just because the burns were so bad, uh, there was just nothing left there that they could save. And when I woke up, it was like nothing happened <laughs> because I remember my wife coming in the room with her eyes just so lit up and tears and so happy to see me. I thought, well, this 
what's happened here? She's never this happy to see me. I mean, she's, she just likes to greet me and everything, but she was real excited. And I had no idea. I remember she kind of reminded me, and then that's when click, everything hit me. Yeah, I do remember me in shock. Way tougher times, and um, I'll still have I still have bad days where things aren't as easy as they used to be, and it'll tear me up a little bit. But I try not to to let it tear me down too bad because I just have to remember where I started from. I was flat on my back and I couldn't even move. How blessed I am to be where I am now. Can't stop me now. Nothing's gonna stop me, nothing's gonna hold me back or keep me from living life. <laughs> so all the hell we've been through, I'm really proud of him for his attitude and always looking forward and not what I can't do, but what I can do. And being a part of this farming operation again, it's been really cool to have him back, especially as a dad. If you want to prove to people that it's possible, you can, you can get through anything learning how to adapt to my changes in life and um, just going going about everyday tasks differently and figuring out ways to accomplish them and um, I've kind of found that if you put your mind to it you can you can accomplish it <laughs>